A very good evening. Thanks for watching Times News with me, Wezi Kasambala. First, the headlines. Some civil society organizations accuse the Tonsi administration of worsening corruption. The Human Rights Defenders Coalition demands the release of expenditure reports submitted by cluster heads for public scrutiny. And Misa Malawi has condemned teachers for harassing a Times journalist. We have these and other stories. Do stay with us. In our top story, the Human Rights Defenders Coalition, or HRDC, has demanded the release of expenditure reports submitted by cluster heads two weeks ago for public scrutiny. Briefing reporters in Nilongwe on Tuesday afternoon, HRDC National Coordinator Luke Dembo said Malawians would like to scrutinize the ex contents of the expenditure reports while awaiting the results of the forensic audit by the National Audit Office. He said HRDC is waiting with keen interest the results, or rather awaiting the results of the audit, saying that if the report would not be convincing, it will organize Malawians to hold nationwide demonstrations. Tembo explains. As HRDC, we, we're keeping on with our promise to uh, alleging that uh, the monies were misused. Um, we are calling upon the audit in one month, and upon, upon um, receiving the audit, um, we are going to launch uh, Pay Back Our Money campaign should the audit find that uh, there have been abuse uh, of funds. But before that, we are also calling upon the government to release the reports that uh, the, uh, all the clusters submitted uh, during the uh, last meeting that the task force had with uh, um, uh, the, uh, the task force on COVID-19. The country's civil society organizations under the banner the National Advocacy Platform, or NAP, on Tuesday slammed the Tonsi administration for the worsening fraud and corruption in the country during the 255 days it has been in power. But Malawi government spokesperson Gospel Kazako said the Tonsi administration is committed to fighting corruption, which is why government increased funding to the Anti-Corruption Bureau. More in this report. NAP chairperson Benedicto Kondowe told reporters in Lirongwe on Tuesday that there is continued lack of accountability and transparency in the management of public resources, heightening corruption and fraud. Kondowe said it is painful to note that corruption has gone unabated under the current administration. If you have continued corruption, it is a sign that systems are not working. Who has the mandate to strengthen the system? It is government. So this is not a wrong call is because we cannot go into government and do that which we have granted to our government. Because under section 12 of the constitution, it clearly states that uh, any person who has been given the powers to govern uh, does so on trust of the citizens through the elections that we had. So we have entrusted government with the responsibility to make sure that it runs the affairs of the state, including making sure that it puts up systems that works for all of us. NGO Gender Coordination Network Chairperson Babla Banda said Malawi continues to witness an escalation of attacks on women and girls, persons with albinism and the elderly. Banda said this year alone three elderly people accused of witchcraft have been killed, saying there has not been a sense of agency from the administration to address the EUs. We put the responsibility upon government to safeguard these uh, spaces because we know these issues of witchcraft, uh, the issues of urbanism, we have inherited them uh, from the previous government and it was the promise of this government that they were going to deal with them decisively. So for us, the lackluster approach is what is really worrying us. Why is government not really on top of the situation in terms of people with urbanism? 
uh, especially when we also know that there are cases that are still uh, outstanding. Why is it those are not being given priority? But reacting to the accusations, government spokesperson Gospel Kazako said the Tonse government has the appetite to provide transparency, saying that is why it has fully funded the office of the Ombudsman as well as the Anti-Corruption Bureau. The Tonse government came into power on June 28, 2020, after winning the June 23 fresh presidential elections. Now, Misa Malawi has advised those who feel offended by material aired on different conventional media platforms to always follow proper ways of expressing their grievances. The remarks follow what some teachers in government schools did on Tuesday by attacking Times Group journalist Alec Bonje over comments that he made on radio and television programs about their ongoing strike. Isaac Salima with details in this report. Teachers in government schools in the country have been on strike forcing authorities to meet their demands. The issue being of major public concern has been in the news since the strike began on Monday. Times Group, in its daily newspaper review programs, both on radio and television, discussed the story. The teachers, however, did not like some of the comments that an analyst in the program, Alec Ponje, made. <laughs> manager obviously the hand of patients okay? isolation centers in reaction the teachers added bonje in whatsapp groups where they attacked him mr malawi chairperson teresa ndanga has since condemned the behavior by advising the teachers to always take proper channels of expressing their grievances the other they can uh, uh, equally air their, their opinion uh, to be heard, other than attacking the personality because someone doesn't agree with a certain position. I think we have always said that there is uh, a proper way where one would uh, be able to seek redress if they think that they have been offended uh, by material that has been aired on any media platform. But National Police Spokesperson James Kadazera urged Ponje to lodge a formal complaint as such conducts are punishable by the law under Electronic Transactions and Cyber Security Act. This is Defense lawyer Powell Nkutabasa asked the court to grant bail to his clients, of which the state agreed. Chirwa attached several bail conditions to the accused, including that they should never leave Longwe District without prior notice to the police. After the ruling, Kutabasa told journalists that the state needs to save the defense with its evidence. The conditions. They're supposed to pay a cash bond of 50,000, one surety. They're not supposed to leave Lilongo without the permission of the police. And they should be bonded at a sum of 100,000 in cash. The state says it is ready with its evidence. They are calling 16 witnesses. That is what they said in court. And that they need three weeks to save the defense with the, their evidence, and then the case will proceed. The 2019 presidential election results, in which former President Bidam Tiger was declared a winner, were nullified by the High Court due to what the court said was systematic and widespread irregularities, including the use of TPEX. The Minister of Information, Gospel Kazako, has told Parliament that the Tonse Alliance government has suspended programs surrounding provision of telecenters in constituencies. Kazako said government is taking a different approach to ensure that such programs are productive. Audrey Kapalamola reports. Kazako, while responding to a request for provision of such facility in Zombantonia constituency, said the program was highly politicized such that it failed to meet the intended purpose. Kazako said government is taking a different approach to ensure that such program is productive. The centers are just being built, um, politically moved. This time around we want to change. In fact, we will not be calling them telecenters. We will be calling them either connect a school or connect a post office. Our preference is connect a school. Connect a school is a very good thing because it will be able to create an atmosphere where uh, students will be able to learn matters digital. It will be built within the precepts of an institution, sometimes even within uh, a school, so that uh, children who are the future of this country 
must start to appreciate matters ICT, matters digital at a very, very tender age. Other MPs also expressed dismay with the development, considering that government had advertised the program with other constituencies earmarked to have the facility by June this year. The Information Minister emphasized that with such a plan, the program will be able to provide a sustainable contribution to the country's growth domestic product in the future. The program that was run in collaboration with Malawi Communications Regulatory Authority planned to provide the facility in all 193 constituencies with an aim of providing information communications technology closer to communities across the country. Now, this year's commemorations of Martyrs Day, which falls on March 3rd, is in limbo as the organizing committee has not yet made a decision to hold the event amidst COVID-19. The event is normally held at a Martyrs Memorial Pillar at Nkata Bay Jetty in the Lakeshore District. From Zuzu, Sam Kalimia reports. Organizing committee, deputy chairperson, Mavu. On every meeting, people should not exceed 50. Now, because of that, uh, as, as a committee, we, we started preparing, but we uh, are uh, not yet make a decision about the number. So, uh, we propose to meet on Thursday so that we should make a decision. Kaunda also revealed that till today, they have not yet secured 7 million kwacha budget for the event. But Minister of Civic Education and National Unity, Timothy Ndambo, said the government will come with its position on the matter. Dambo, however, said government cancelled Chilembe Day commemorations following the pandemic. Government instructed that there must no any gathering of more than 50 people as one way of preventing the, the spread of COVID-19. Mother's Day is a public holiday and Malawians honor the political heroes who were shot dead by British soldiers during colonialism. Normally, invited guests joined the bereaved families to lay raids at Mikundi Memorial Site before the activities reach the climax at the Jirundu area where people listen to speeches. We'll be right back after this short break. To achieve great things in life, you must do little things every day, like the one, two, three with Colgate. One, wake up, wake up. Two, brush up, brush up. Three, smile through your day with a fresh breath and strong tea. Smile through your day with a fresh breath and strong tea. Do the one, two, three with Colgate and give yourself a future to smile about. gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mirror, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News Bulletin on Times TV. As a response to a story aired on one of our bulletins recently, which exposed the suffering of people from Mabigo and Nguede villages in Nilongwe, Compassionate Mission Center from Zomba has donated items including maize and small solar lamps to the villages. In our special report, it was discovered that the people from the two villages are surviving on wild tubers and banana roots after they were chased from their homes and have gathered gathered at a single spot near Tuma Forest. More on this report by Matthias Cassandra. People from Mapigo and Gwede villages were forced out of their land in 2019 
by people from two villages they share boundaries with. Since then, they have been unable to till their fields, pushing them into abject poverty. Wild tubers and banana roots have become their everyday food. Compassionate Mission Center Executive Director Francis Mpinganjira says the organization has responded after watching on times how the villagers are suffering. So when we saw the video clip which you showed on uh, some two or three weeks ago about the villagers here, how they are suffering, how they are, they are, they are getting their food, how their fellow villagers are you know, treating them, that it just didn't motivate us. But we felt sorry, we prayed about it, and we said, Lord, if you can send us to these villages, please just send us. So that's why we came here. We came here just to give them some... One of the villagers. I'm very much glad that he, since we have been eating in Pama from the bush, we shall now test to eat some sim at home. The two villages were chased out of their homes and their houses were demolished, calling them foreigners, despite settling in the land over 100 years ago. Also in the news, with the escalating numbers of rape and defilement in the country, the Ministry of Gender, Disability, Children and Social Welfare has urged women from different religious denominations to take a leading role in the fight against the vice. According to the Ministry's Quality Control Officer, Chikondi Chiwumbozo, the country has registered 21% increase in defilement and rape cases in 2020, up from 11% in 2019, where Zigausi reports. With the alarming figures the country keeps on recording each and every year, they say they're leaving no stone unturned. This time around, they have trained Lebanon sisters to help in the fight of defilement and rape. Chumbozo says the situation is very worrisome, hence the decision to involve religious women in the fight. Targeted women are religious women because they also form part of the nation and as a nation they have the role to play because this issue of defilement as well as rape we've been having these cases as rising cases and as a government we believe that these women as religious women they also have a role to play speaking after the training in Ilongwe, chairperson of the association of women in religious institutes of malawi sister mary Kreya kapachika said they were ready to play their role in the fight against defilement and rape. Kapachika said the time has come to take such messages to the church as some of the culprits are Christians too. We hear more on the way forward how, how can we take up our role as religious women in Malawi to embark on this journey whereby we, have, we can assist the families or we can assist the, um, the children. Uh, looking at we sisters, indeed we are found everywhere, uh, in the remote areas as well as in towns where we are working. We have sisters who are social workers, some are working in the hospitals and they are working in the education, some are working in the parishes. So we are in touch with different people. A report indicate that the increased deformment cases in hotspots area where Lilong we recorded 234 cases Blanta 174 cases, Machinga 108 cases, Kasungu 107 cases, Zomba 92 cases, Mangochi 88 cases, and Mzimba 87 cases from the period of January to October 2020. In a bid to combat the further spread of COVID-19, Save the Children on Monday donated assorted medical items to Mwanza District Hospital worth 15 million kwacha. Thomas Kajeri has more in this report. Save the Children says it is helping others with protective materials because of the interest it has to protect children. Operations Manager for the organization Toko Bema says the organization wants to see people being saved from the pandemic. He said the donation is under European Union Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Eco Project. As you know, Manza District is one of the high risk districts because uh, it's found in the border area. Uh, lots of people coming in and out, and uh, this puts the district at the high risk. And for us, as the children, uh, our major interest is uh, the children that have been affected by the COVID 19 uh, impact. And we feel 
that we need to do something for children in Mwanza to make sure that they are protected. Director of Health and Social Services for Mwanza District, Dr. Irene Zuze, commended Save the Children, saying the donation will help in combating and managing the pandemic. On behalf of everyone, we are very excited and happy with this donation. Uh, there are a lot of items that have been donated for preventing COVID, uh, as well as assisting the existing uh, uh, patients that are there that we see each and every day, such as the mattresses and other items. So these things are really gone deep and they are going to assist so much for Mwanza District. Meanwhile, Acting District Commissioner for Mwanza, Ernest Kazokoya, has called upon people to observe COVID-19 preventive measures and seek medication in time once they show signs. Actually, that's what we've been uh, trying to get rid of, this, this kind of myth that are over, uh, that people should not be uh, patronizing our hospitals. But what we are urging them is one, they have to have that spirit, that health signal behavior, if they are to get support from uh, COVID-19. It's basically people are, are recovering from COVID-19. We had over 170 cases here in Manza, uh, 164 have recovered. Manza District registered 170 cases of COVID-19 and 164 recovered. The donation includes mattresses, hand sanitizer, cleaning materials, liquid soap, face masks, among others, all with 15 million kwacha. Well, that's, that concludes the bulletin and indeed my final bulletin here at the Times Group. But before I leave you one last time, the headlines once again. Some civil society organizations accuse the Tons administration of worsening corruption. The Human Rights Defenders Coalition demands the release of expenditure reports submitted by cluster heads for public scrutiny. And Misa Malawi has condemned teachers for harassing a Times journalist. You've been with me, Wezi Kasambala. You can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times360 Malawi, and following us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly observe social distance and of course put on a mask from me Wezika Sambala it's good night and all the best bye for now